Welcome back. The race for U.S. Senate officially solidified. Eric Hovde, by no surprise, with a resounding victory in the Republican primary this past week, now officially set to take on Democratic Senator Tammy Baldwin. Both candidates crisscrossing the state now in this final stretch. And now, new insight into the race itself. Jessica Taylor is the Senate and Governor's Editor for the Cook Political Report. She joins us now. Jessica, welcome to Upfront. Thanks for having me. So you have new data just out on this uh, on the key swing state uh, Senate races uh, here in Wisconsin. You have Baldwin up seven points over Hubdi. Can you take us inside some of those numbers here in Wisconsin and what this means? Uh, what are the key takeaways? Yeah, so this is actually the one race in our Senate polling since we last conducted these polls in May that has tightened. Baldwin was up 12. But, you know, seven points in a state like Wisconsin, I think, is still pretty significant. Baldwin there right at 50 and um, that's sort of for an incumbent that's about sort of where you want to be um you know we've seen a lot of money poured into this race obviously hubdi has put a lot of his own money in the race but baldwin still you know in other polls we didn't test favorability in this poll but you know in i've you know in recent marquette survey she still you know remains sort of about one to one and we've really seen hubdi's negatives go up since he entered the race still largely more undefined than baldwin is which is understandable after you know she's you know she's 12 years in office and then in the house before that um but you know this is a race that when i talk with you know national republicans that look at it it's still it's, you know it's it's certainly a race that's going to be competitive but it's not up there with the most competitive senate races i think that goes to montana and ohio for sure and then you know probably even a michigan or a pennsylvania might even be um or a nevada might be ahead of wisconsin at this juncture and to that jessica as, as we sit here today i'm curious what are you seeing and how notable is the difference between what we're seeing at the top of the ticket in the race for president in some of these races and then some of the yeah. down ballot the senate races both in Wisconsin and the other swing states. Yeah, so we see Baldwin leading by a bigger margin. Our polling has Harris up three points in this survey, and that's in when we tested again. That was Biden and Trump. Of course, in May it was tied. That was Biden's best state. You know, Wisconsin's been the tipping point state in the electoral college for the past two election cycles. And, you know, it used to, we used to think of like Ohio or Florida as the ultimate swing state. It really might be Wisconsin now. Um, you know, and I look to just that it has a history of electing both Republicans and Democrats and, and you know, a state that elected Ron Johnson also elected Tammy Baldwin and if she can be reelected. Um, so it's it, we see very close elections in the state. And when you look at other sw swing states in the Senate races, I mean, could we see more split tickets than we do previously based on at least what we're seeing here today? That's what we're seeing, which is really against the historical norm. Um, in 2016, every single Senate race went the same way as the presidential race did. In 2020, only Maine Susan Collins managed went to win re-election, even as Biden carried that state. And typically, we see these numbers pretty close to each other. But the fact that we are seeing Democrats run better, run far further ahead, um, you know, when we get down into it, we've seen that um, particularly vo voters actually still, even with the switch that's happened just over the past, you know, three and a half weeks, um, they still think that Trump is going to win. So these voters are telling us actually that they want to elect a Democratic Senate to be a check on a Trump administration. Now, whether those perceptions change over the coming weeks as this campaign has been reset and after we head into post Labor Day, how could that affect the race? That's something I hope we can dive into in some of our next polling. But at this juncture, you know, Democratic Senate messaging, particularly on abortion, um, on the economy as well, even voters that, you know, did not feel like the Biden administration were, or Democrats were doing enough, particularly to fight inflation, um, were voting for a Democratic Senate candidate. So we've seen these Democratic Senate candidates that have a more effective message than at least the White House. We are less than three months away from Election Day. What are you watching most closely between now and November 5th? I think in the Senate race, I'm watching to sort of see, does this become a race about Hubdi or about Baldwin? I think right now, Democrats have made it more of a referendum on Hubdi. You know, a lot of the things he said about people in nursing homes, um, you know, people who uh, actually when I was there in Milwaukee for the convention, our Uber driver brought up unprompted that she, you know, one of re repeating one of Democrats ads that Hubdi wanted to make obese people pay more for health care and that she didn't like that. So I think a lot of Democratic ads, they really sort of set the tone on Hubdi. And I think he needs to shift this race to make it more one about Baldwin. Jessica Taylor, the Senate and Governor's Editor for the Cook Political Report. Jessica, hey, thank you so much for your time and insight. Thank you. Up next, the big record.